What up YouTube? Salvador Brigman here and today we are talking about Kickstarter success tips. So what have I learned in the last four or five years? Um, teaching about Kickstarter, teaching about crowdfunding Indiegogo. You know, I started in 2012. I started with my blog, crowdcrux.com, and then started kickstarterforum.org. That's grown to be over 7,000 members, I believe now. Um, we also have crowdfundingforum.com. I have a bunch of books out there on Amazon. I have online courses. Um, the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast, which actually increasingly in like the last year or so, maybe the last two years, um, that's become a more primary source for the way that people stumble on my work. And also this YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, take a second to subscribe because I put out videos pretty regularly on how to not only get backers, how to market your crowdfunding campaign, you know, how do you actually raise money for your business or for a nonprofit crowdfunding campaign? How do you do that? So I talk all about that on this YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, take a second to subscribe. With this video, I wanna go through some of the things that I've learned. Um, some of the, the tips, the strategies, the things that you can use to actually raise more money on Kickstarter, and also how you can get um, more ROI for the time you spend in. You, know, you only have a limited amount of time. You're probably working on your Kickstarter project, I'd say either part-time, maybe after work. Um, there are very few people, I think, that actually work on this you know, full-time, say you know, 60 hours per week. Um, so you have a limited amount of time and you also have a limited budget and how do you spend that wisely? I wanna talk a little bit about that in this video. So I get a lot of different types of um, people coming up to me, sort of gauges what where Kickstarter is, you know, in terms of the brand penetration, in terms of whether or not it's mainstream, all of that kind of stuff. But consistently, I usually get people coming up to me being like, Yo, Sal, like I'm seeing people raise a lot of money on Kickstarter for these different campaigns. I wanna do that. Like, I wanna get all these strangers to support my project or to support my campaign or to, to buy into my new product. Like, should I launch a Kickstarter campaign? Like, is this a good product? And usually what I say to them is, well, there are a few different things that go into that. So first of all, strangers rarely will just like right out of the gate back your campaign. And if you go into the, the archives of my podcast, the Crowdfunding Demystified Show, you'll see some campaigns are just successful right out of the gate. Usually though, they have a really awesome product, something that really solves a problem and something that has a little bit of viral potential. You know, there's, there's sort of a built-in community of people that are interested in these types of products. Other ones, you'll have a lot of different experiences on my forum where people launch a project and it just flops. It literally gets no backers and no pledges. So how do you explain these two different examples? You know, why is it you can launch a campaign and get funding, but you can also launch a campaign and not get funding? It's kind of like, you think about Amazon, while yes, there are a lot of buyers. While yes, you can go on Amazon, you can make a lot of money if you create good products. You can also launch a product on Amazon and quite frankly, waste a lot of money and waste a lot of time. Just cause there is a marketplace, does not mean that you're necessarily going to penetrate that marketplace, does not mean that you're going to actually get backers or get customers from that marketplace. So usually when people come up to me and like, Sal, is this a good product? I ask them, have you talked with potential customers? Have you done a little bit of customer research? Have you done something like say, send cold traffic to a landing page, see how many subscribers you get just based on the, the video of the product or just based on the images of the product and describing it a little bit? Have you done that initial verification to show that there is demand in the marketplace for this product? You have to do that. You have to be willing to, to put your product out there and see whether or not people are actually interested in it. If people are like, oh, like this is another one of those, or like, oh, why is this any different? Or I don't understand how to use it. Or what do you actually do with this thing? These are all different things you have to address with your marketing as you're going forward and putting together your Kickstarter campaign page. So the first tip for Kickstarter and crowdfunding success is to do a bit of pre-validation. You know, work to build up an email list before you launch. Get, get people's feedback before you actually hit that launch button with your Kickstarter campaign. And you're gonna thank me later because that way when you launch, it's not gonna just be crickets. You know, it's not just gonna be like you launch and no one's backing it. You already know that this is a problem that many people experience. You already know the communities out there that experience this problem. Do your research 
first. So you have to do a little bit of research in terms of how crowdfunding works, how backers actually find out about projects, how it is you can turn a potential website visitor into a, into a backer. How do you convert them through that process? You have to learn that. You have to learn what goes into an effective Kickstarter campaign launch or an effective crowdfunding campaign launch. So the actual education of yourself and your team, that is tip number two if you want to see success on Kickstarter. And I have put together tons and tons of information for you guys on that. You know, Not only this YouTube channel, I also have the book, the Kickstarter launch formula. I also put together a free training course that goes through how to get backers, how to trigger these various emotions, the things that actually make people want to back campaigns, like all of that kind of stuff. You can find that in the description of this YouTube video, and I go through all of that. But in addition to just the, the research that you do on crowdfunding itself, you also have to research other campaigns. You know, going back a few campaigns, it doesn't have to be for large amounts, but you'll start to very quickly see what these campaign videos look like. You'll start to see what kind of reward tiers they're offering. You'll start to get a feel for their communications with backers, the campaign techs, like all of that kind of stuff. So the next step here comes down to cold, hard numbers. So cold, hard numbers. You know, I think the first two tips, um, if you're just getting started, this is really what you need to do. If you're more of, you know, you're like a few weeks away, maybe you're two weeks away from launching, you should have done that ahead of time. But at, once you're now at this point, it's kind of like, okay, what can we do now to actually boost our funding meter to get the most amount of pledges possible and to really have a strong first week leading into the rest of the campaign? And that's, I'm gonna come back to the cold, hard numbers fact. There is both an art and a science to Kickstarter. Like it sounds really fancy, like there's an art to Kickstarter, um, but there is, it's true. You know, I, I'm more of a logical kind of guy, but I've certainly appreciated the fact that certain products just randomly take off because they resonate with backers. You know, there, there is an art to it in that sense, but there's also a science, and that's what I study. I study the proven strategies that work when it comes to actually getting backers for your Kickstarter, for your, your Indiegogo, for any kind of crowdfunding campaign, really. It comes down to numbers. So I have a very specific question to ask you. And I want you to write this down. If you don't know the answer, go and check with your campaign manager or your marketing manager. How many email subscribers do you have now that you're in the pre-launch phase and you're ready to launch? How many email subscribers have you accumulated on your pre-launch list? I want you to answer that because that's gonna be the number one determining factor of if you're gonna have a strong first day, a first week, or even the entire duration. You wanna have a good number of email subscribers going into the launch of your campaign, and then you're gonna blast this message out, you're gonna announce the project to all of these people who've already indicated that they're interested in your product, that they're interested in getting access to the early bird reward tiers, they're interested in supporting you, I want you to, to really put nail down the number that you have because not also not everyone is going to back the project who's on your email list. You maybe you see a 10% you know, conversion kind of where 10% of the people on the list are actually backing the project. Maybe you see 5%, maybe you're seeing close to 2%. You know, on the, on the upper tiers, maybe you're seeing more like 15% and that would be really good. So you can very quickly determine the number of backers that you're going to get usually throughout the duration of your campaign based on the email list that you've built up. Now the second number that I want you to write down is what is your marketing budget? Be very honest with yourself. What is your marketing budget? And don't come here and say to me, I don't have a marketing budget or don't say like, oh, I, only, I don't have any money for marketing. If you don't have any money for marketing, then don't do a Kickstarter campaign. You need a marketing budget, you need an advertising budget if you wanna stand out on Kickstarter or on Indiegogo. So I want you to write that number down also. Typically, I will see that a campaign will set aside about two to $5,000 for marketing, and that's usually a healthy amount for someone who's just starting out. If you're looking to raise something like six figures and seven figures, you certainly need a marketing budget. A lot of these seven figure campaigns will spend anywhere like $60,000 on marketing, on Facebook ads, on PR, you know, on getting the word out, on building their email list. They're spending all that money on marketing and the numbers make sense for them. Other ones, it might be more like 30,000 or 20,000 or 10,000. It really kind of varies. 
but you want to engineer the success of this Kickstarter campaign as much as possible. So try to put aside a hefty marketing budget. Um, this is going to not only make a difference when you're live, you know, can you maintain momentum, can you get more and more backers, etc., but it's also going to feed into the number of email subscribers you get from point one because you can advertise this, this pre-launch page and you can get email subscribers that way. Your fundraising goal obviously is going to play into this. If you have a very high fundraising goal, you should really ask yourself, is this necessary? Like, is it really necessary that I have to raise this much money? Because you want to set as low of a, of a bar as possible. The goal is to very quickly surpass your fundraising goal and then to, to keep raising money. You're already then a crowdfunding success story. You can do things like you can come on my podcast, you can share all of that kind of stuff, you can go and, uh, and research and contact journalists and you can spread that message. So you want to try to engineer success and hit your fundraising goal as rapidly as possible and continue to raise money uh, until the, the end of your campaign. Now, of course, you don't want to just like have a really low goal and then not be able to deliver on your rewards. That's, that's just a, a science, a recipe for failure. And you know, a lot of angry customers and a lot of angry backers. You want to make sure, obviously, that the, the fundraising goal is going to allow you to fulfill on your rewards. Finally, if you do want all of my tips, all of my information, you know, I shared a lot of stuff in this video. If you want more of a drill down, you know, very short kind of lessons, very actionable, you know, no kind of fluff, anything like that, you should go and check out my free video course which walks you through not only some of the psychological triggers that you can use to get people to back your campaign, but also it goes through how to get backers on Kickstarter, how to market your project, like all that kind of stuff, how to get media attention. I'm gonna include that as a link in the description of this YouTube video. So go and check that out, I urge you. If you did like this video, if you want more videos like this, if you wanna support Sal and be like, yo Sal, I really like this video, Take a second to give me a thumbs up. Um, I really enjoy any kind of feedback or comments I get. I try to make the videos better for you, more comprehensive every single week. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get a notification when new videos come out. 